There it Hi, goes. Hi, Emily. What about Amy? Hi, Amy. I don't see Amy. Too. Yeah, where is Amy? I don't know. I okay. Just, all I gotta say is Emily looks uh, beautiful today. I hope they watch this. Okay, so four two posting from a general journal to a general ledger improving cash. Um, to do this, transferring the information from a journal entry, which is what you've been doing in your chapters one, two, and three journal entries, to now we're gonna put it in a ledger account. It's called posting. To post, you take that entry. Do you see this is what we were doing, right? January 2nd, cash, Michael Delgado Capital. We had the document number in, we had the debit and credit amounts. Okay, so what you're doing now is taking this information, the January 2nd, the account is cash, so you find in the general ledger the account cash, and you put the date, January 2nd. This comes from general journal page one, so you put G1 in that post reference box. You put if the debit or credit amount, this happens to be debit, so 2000 goes down here. These last two columns are your running totals. They tell you the balance of that single account okay so right now you just transfer this over because there's not a balance there and you put two thousand dollars there debit notice that says debit okay this was a debit right okay to do the second one oh and then oh I forgot the last step you take account number 110 right here and put it up in this this is called post reference okay and you put the number 110 up here so then you do go down and you find the ledger account, Michael Delgado Capital, for the next entry, January 2nd, from General Journal, page one, credit amount for $2,000. So you put it in the credit column, and then you drag your balance over, $2,000, then you put 310 up in post-reference. That's going to be one of the hardest things to remember to do from all the years I've been teaching this now to stick that, that post reference back. Just you're referencing back to where you got that information from or where you put it at, okay? Now, here is an account that has a balance. I wish I could really zoom in on this. Let's try. I guess that doesn't work, okay? So here is supplies account and it already had a debit balance of $165, okay? You see that right here? Then, so the entry is on the 5th, supplies, um, on General Journal, page 1. They have a debit amount of $220. So you put that there, 220 Now, if you had 165 debit and you're going to add a 220 debit to it, that means your balance is going to go up, right? So, yeah. so you take 165 plus 220 equals 385 is the total of, that's a balance of your debit account, of that debit. Then you take the 150 and put it up there. Okay. On this one, it's a little bit different because this is posting a debit amount to an account with a credit balance. So you take, your account is accounts payable. So you found that ledger. The date is the 9th from General Journal, page 1. Notice the entry is a debit of $100 so there, but your balance was a credit balance. So they're opposites. What would you do with opposites? You would subtract, subtract opposites, right? Yeah. So 220 minus 100 gives you a credit of now only 120. It is like they charged it and they paid their bill. So their bill went down. Does that make sense? So this is credit. actually accounts payable. So this is us paying them. We charged it, but then we paid some of it. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Here is a journal page with posting complete. This is posting. Do you see knowing that they're all complete with all those numbers down there? And this is a ledger with all that posting complete. It's a lot easier on your um, electronic version, I promise. It looks... This is the paper version, and it was pretty intense. But the electronic one, they're all right there for you, and you just click on them and open them. So, To prove cash, you want to make sure your balance of your cash account is the same as what's on your checkbook stub. Okay, like what's in your checking account, because that's your cash too. So um, you want the balance, this debit balance, to equal the same as that. And that's called just proving cash. How to go down what? Okay. 
So then there's a few questions there. We don't need that. Okay, you, that's on Google Classroom. You can go through that all on your own also. So I'm gonna close out. Now I'm going to go to Working Papers 4-2. So, ready? Yes. Under End of Lesson Review, Working Papers 4-2. Work together. Let's do it together. Are you ready? Yes. They've already done all the posting. See? The posting's all done. You are going to do the I said that wrong. They've they are they've already entered all the account information in the general drawer. You're going to do the posting. Okay. So here's your general ledger accounts. So the first entry is April 1st cash. General journal page one. So you open cash, you type in APR1. Did you put any did we put anything in the item column? No. Where'd it come from? General journal page one. The debit amount was twenty five hundred, so you go to debit and put twenty five hundred. And our balance is now. 2500 in the debit. Now you take this number 110 and put it up here. Don't forget that part. Right here. And drop it up under post reference that you posted. You're referencing that you posted it to this account. So when do you put something in the item? What is that? What is that? Nothing. Oh, okay. Nothing right it's now. Because it's, it's all cash. It's all that cash. That account is cash. So it's just there. It's just there. Yep. That's why I was cash. Right? Oh, that was red. That's right. So next we go to Omar Bo Capital. Nope, that was drawing capital. Date still is April 1st. Nothing in item. General journal page one, G1. A credit of 2,500. If you're not using the keypad on the side of your keyboard, you should be. and the tab button instead of using your mouse through it all. Oh, press number lock if it's not typing. N-U-M-L-O-C-K, the top of it. So, um, Take when you go do uh, other letters, um, oh, for the day, do you still put April? Uh huh. Third. Okay. And then you change it. You don't have to put APR. You just put three. Oh. Unless oh, unless it's a oh wait, if it's a new entry, you have to put APR. Yeah. That's I thought you meant like in cash. No. You just put the third like you do, like plain three. Okay. So it's at the very top. You have to put. Yes, the, it's at the very top. You have to put the month, okay. or if there's a change in the month. So prepaid insurance is next. Yeah. A APR three. G1, 330. I hear those mice. You're not supposed to use mice? I'm just saying. No, you can use it. 140 goes up in the post reference. G1 for post reference in the ledger. 140 for the post reference in the journal. Next one's cash, and you just have to put the number three there. Still G1, but it's a credit for 330. So this is where I break out this calculator that I haven't taught you how to use yet. What, the system right now? Yep, turn it on to a P. The P, which one, the first one? Um, uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, got her. At the top, turn it on to square the P. It says print. Because I, I like tape. I like proof. It's called proof. Oh. Okay. So you had 2,500 in there. So you type 2,500 in. <coughs> no, do not hit the subtract button. Type 2,500 in. Hit plus. No, that seems weird. Now, we are subtracting 330 from it. So now you take 330 
And now you press the minus button. Uh, it's red above the plus button. And the total is 2170. And you put that in the new, the empty debit box in that same row. That's because it's not in the debit, so that's going to stay there, right? For now, until you use all your debit money or something like that. Okay, to clear out your calculator now, you press the star button, the total, that's total, asterisk. It's okay, it's out of its brain, but you can press it again and it goes away. Okay. So basically, it stay in the debit until we get the debit to like yep, zero. zero. And then if it's a credit, we'll switch over to credit. Okay, take up to the top and put 110 in the post reference of that row. Did you put 2170? Yeah, but I. Uh, Here, is that better? I have to scroll now. That's what I don't like. I don't like all these forwards in my way in my calculator. Yeah, you can put forward. Okay, next entry is supplies. So go find your supplies account. Got it. And it's APR. APR. Four, G one, debit for a hundred and sixty. Take up a one thirty. It's very repetitive. Um, I like the flipping through paper. I don't. There's something about touching paper to do it. But it works for what we have now. <laughs> they don't like it. They like computer better. I feel like it gets a little more because if you're actually doing accounting in a business, you're going to be doing it on the computer. Like, um, but they didn't like the notebooks, the books, you know, packet full of paper. <laughs> I remember carrying them. Oh, yeah. They used to do it that way. Okay. Um, let's go next is accounts payable ready supply. April 4th, G1, credit for 160. Take 210 and put it up. Okay, Anna? Yep. Next is an entry for cash on the 8th. G1. A debit for 325. So 2170 plus 325, and then you hit plus again. So what's the equal sign? 2495. It's just kind of the same as equals right there. Take 110 and put it up here. PR8, yep. So sales, APR8, G1. A debit for or credit, I'm sorry, for 325. Grab that number 410 and put it up at the top. Okay. 
Did Emily that open? You think this is easier to see, or is there a glare from the lights on the TV? Easier to see. Easier to see than the smart board? Wait, what? Is this the TV easier to see than the smart board or yeah. not? Thanks. Okay. It's the TV. So when it says item, like. Just leave it blank. Okay, but how, like, when are we supposed to put anything in there? Well, when we do totals, you'll put the word total in there, but otherwise you leave it blank. Okay. Yep. We're not there yet. Okay, next entry is accounts receivable, Dan Carroll. April 9th, G1, 122, and take your 120 and put it up here. Sales for the ninth, G1, 122. So that's a credit. So you take your 325 plus 122. Oops. 447. Rent expense. April 12th, G1. Did I go too fast? Yeah. Where am I supposed to put the um, 447? Uh, in the second credit box across from. Um, what I got was it? it. Don't worry. Keep going. I got it. Sales. Okay, that's where. Right there. Right there. Right there. I think I forgot what I was doing. Okay. Rent expense April twelfth, G one two sixty. Five ten. Bring it up to the top. Next is cash. Twelfth, G one, two sixty. So it's opposite. So two sixty is opposite. It's a credit balance or a credit entry, and we have a debit balance. So two four nine five subtract two sixty. I'm a little bit ahead of you, I think. Yeah. I'm going to press pause. Okay. So we have to take 2495 minus 260 to get 2235. We take 110 and put it up here. Of uh, people at home. I'm back again. Okay. Let's go um, for the 15th accounts payable ready supply. 15, oops, 15, G1, 80. So uh, it had 160 balance. Gets 80 taken away from that, which the answer is without doing the math there. With a calculator, 80, 80. right? Oops, I put it in the wrong side, though. 80. 80. Take up 210. Next, cash for the 15th, G1. It's a credit for 80. The balance is debit. The entry is credit. So we need to subtract them. So take 223, 5, plus 80, and then press the minus. 2235 plus 80. 80, now hit minus. Oh. What'd you get? 2155. Uh, 2155. 2155 in the debit balance side. So take up 110, 
pretty sure I was not doing that red dot thing a second ago. What? When I click, was it doing that? Did you oh, see that no. red circle? Click a different one. See, 16. Oh, what'd you do? Mm -hmm. G1. A debit for $65. So, so if it's got a debit balance and we're making a debit entry, we're going to add those two together. Twenty-two twenty. Mm. One ten. So next account is accounts receivable, Dan Carroll. So we're going to take the sixteen G one. It is a credit for $65. Notice our balance is a debit, right? Now we've added or we're going to have to subtract $65 from that. So 122 and on a calculator you press plus 65 minus. So now you have a debit balance of $57. So essentially this means Dan Carroll owed us $122. And he paid us 65 of that, so he still owes us a total of 57, right? Yeah. It's like an IOU, isn't it? Okay. Take up here and put 120. What? Press star twice. There you go. Now start again. So press 122. Plus 65, and then press the minus. Here, page two. Mm-hmm. So you are going to go to page two. There's one entry on page two on the 25th for Omar Bow drawing. G two. April. Yep. 25th. Instead of G one, we put G two. Debit for $500, debit balance for $500. $320, post reference at the top. Last entry is going to be cash on the 25th. G2, not G1, G2 this time. A credit for $500. It means he's taking it away, right? A credit to cash. So take 220. Plus 500 and then press minus 1720. Oh, it did it. I got And that is, oh, I think I forgot to bring up my number. 110. Don't forget that. Account number under post reference. You can check to make sure it's filled in. Then you know you've know then you know you've entered all your entries. Save and continue. And the next one is on your own. So you get to do on your own, on your own. What? I say I asked for help. Then I would go in to apply your understanding and do application problem 4 2 also. If you choose not to do on your own, that's fine. I'm not giving you points for on your own and work together in this chapter. So if you don't want to do on your own, just close out of it and go to the application problem. Because it's the same exact thing. And I think three times might be a little too much. Does that make sense? Everyone's like, oh, I don't want to do on your own then. Why would you make us do it? So if you're having trouble, then that's when you should do it. Because the on your own is not for a grade. The application's for a grade. And I will reset it if you want me to reset it. Okay. Yes, the application. I'll reset it back to zero and you can take it again. But Okay, I'm gone for the day. That's it.
Adios. Bye, guys. Peace out.